Just go for it! <laughs> Hey everybody, it's me, your buddy Dave, here at The Dark Stuff. Thanks a lot for checking out the new video, and I know what you're thinking. Man, it has been a long time since you've been here, and yeah, that's true. It's been a couple of months, and I decided I wasn't going to come back and make up a bunch of excuses or have some rationale for the absence. It's just a fact I was gone. Um, I don't have any anything to say about it. It may be another two months before I'm back with another video. I'm just going to have to play it by ear. I think people, when they have these channels and they're they're doing this for a long time, I've been doing this for five years, that sometimes you just go in these peaks and valleys and for time periods where you just don't really feel like doing it. I also saw a video recently, uh, one of the few uh, videos that I've watched recently where uh, Chris over at Dixieland Farm was talking about how he's not all of his videos are going to be vinyl community videos anymore and he has other interests etc etc and it's going to start being expressed on the channel and I thought yeah you know maybe that's what I'm going to do too I don't know for the new video today I decided I'm going to mostly focus on some live shows that I've seen I've got some good footage a couple of concerts I saw I showed you a little bit of Beck there I'm going to show you some more of that couple other shows um, I did the Maha Music Festival this year and even though it was a two-day festival this year I shot about 10% of the amount of footage I did last year so I'm a little bit light on that but we'll delve into it and I do have one new record that I wanted to show and talk about because I think it's really good uh, let's just start there so okay so the record I'm going to talk about first is this one here from a band called Camp Dogs the album is called In Rounds and these guys are a band from Chicago. You will end and begin again. So the album is just on black vinyl. It comes with these custom labels. It's got a sheet with the lyrics, um, handwritten. It's a little hard to read, especially my age with my eyesight or whatever. It's not always uh, that fantastic. But the reason I got this record is because it's released on the 15 Passenger label, which is a label run by the guys from the band Cursive. Okay, Cursive, long time indie rock band, been around for more than 20 years. They're based here in Omaha. And uh, Ted Stevens, the guitar player, kind of runs the label and he sent me a package with it and a little note here uh, from Ted saying, we've really fallen for this group, wanted to get you some copies, hoping you see it too, thanks Ted. Also sent me a little uh, 15 Passenger koozie there so the band camp dogs like i said really really good they're in the indie rock vein got a little bit of a folky vibe um a female singer most of the time i would say i would reference the band uh lone justice but i don't know if one if people remember lone justice and two if that might be a little too poppy and mainstream because that's not really what the thing is i'm just trying to think of a kind of a rootsier indie rock band that can get really hard and edgy and stuff, but is mostly kind of stays in this sort of meandering folky style. Anyways, good vocals, good performances. Um, Cursive is going to have a new record out shortly, and when they do, they're going to go on tour. I'm talking about within the next couple weeks, probably. And when they do, they're going to go out on tour, and once they go out on that tour, Camp Dogs are going to be the opener. There's a... Uh, a November show coming up with Cursive that I'm going to check out and I'll hopefully be able to see them at that time.
Um, as I alluded to earlier, I did get to see Beck uh, recently. I've been a fan of Beck for probably 25 years since he first really kind of emerged on the scene back with the Mellow Gold record and Loser and everything. And I did not take him seriously at first. I, I just thought Beck was another sort of alternative novelty group artist, I should say. And I didn't take him seriously. And it wasn't until Odele came out in 1996 that I think I started realizing, wow, this guy is really significant. And then I went back and got some of his acoustic albums, his experimental one on Flipside, and, and just some other stuff that he was doing, and I've been a, a consistent fan ever since. For some reason, I've just never seen him live, and um, so this time around, it was Wednesday night, and I get a call, and I'm like, hey, do you, you want to go see Beck? And I'm like, yeah, what, when is it? He's like, well, now. Like, we'd have to go basically right now. I'd like to make a formal request. If it would be all right if I could... Uh... For some reason, I, I had the impression that Beck would be one of these artists that uh, doesn't want to revisit the hits and doesn't want to play the more classic stuff, that he would be somebody who just says... Um, you know, I got my new album and I'm going to play my new stuff and that's what I'm into and deal with it. I don't know where I got that impression from. I'm not really sure, but I'll say he kicked off the show immediately with like Devil's Haircut and goes right into Loser and he's playing a lot of his 90s classics, 90s and early 2000s classics. So he is uh, willing to play the hits. I don't know where I got the impression that he wasn't doing that. The tour was in support of the Colors album. That's his newest record. He did do a couple of cuts from that, and it was kind of a, the dullest part of the show. And I think the Colors record is okay, but um, it was a little bit of a slow part of the show. He said he wasn't going to do very much mellow stuff, so you didn't hear like the sea change stuff too much. Uh, though he did do a little bit of uh, Lost Cause, I think, on that one. And he did some covers. Um, what did they do? Raspberry Beret did a little bit of that from Prince. We sing that together. Raspberry Beret. The kind to find that second hand stuff was a Raspberry Beret. You take it. Uh, there was also another cover where they did um, the Human League's Don't You Want Me, where Beck did it with uh, Julian Casablancas from, uh, well, he's from The Strokes, but in this case he was in The Voids. The Voids were the opening band, by the way. I caught just about their entire set. I liked it. I have a Voids record. I, I mean, I didn't think it was amazing. It was noisy and weird at points, and I liked Julian Casablancas' voice, his style in general, because of The Strokes, so I was sort of used to it. with uh with uh uh beck i was hearing it on my way out to be honest because once the encore started uh it's an out it was an outdoor venue and we had to park like way the fuck nowhere so i just we just decided to leave a little bit early to to get that so i was just kind of hearing it as i was walking out but great show from beck very happy that i went Yeah, this
So recently I got to see Twin Peaks again. This was the first time in a couple years. Uh, last time I caught them at the waiting room. This time they were at a much bigger place. They were at Sokol Auditorium and they were opening for Shaky Graves. Um, now, Twin Peaks, I've been talking about them on this channel for a long time. I think they're uh, one of my favorite, they're one of my favorite bands in the last couple of years. Chicago band, just great rock and roll, really excellent. All the guys sing in the band, they're fun live. they're like they get drunk and crazy they're kind of like the old replacements in a sense that they get they can be really out of control but they can also kind of rein it in for a bit um so their set was short it was only 45 minutes but it was really really good Probably even better than the last time I saw them, which was their own headline set. This time, again, they were the opener, but uh, there was a small section of kids right at the front that were just there to see Twin Peaks and were very, very into it and they were vibing off that and so it was a it was a fun show they did stuff i don't think anything new they they should have a new album out pretty soon here because their last studio album was 2017 so they're definitely due but um just a good playing of the classics i love these guys twin peaks get that live album herbs in Porto. okay i don't understand the title either but it is one of the best live albums the last couple of years it's a truly live album not doesn't sound like a studio recording with clapping. Just saying, Twin Peaks, go get it. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to show you is some footage from this year's Maha Music Festival. If you go back in my archives, you'll see I used to do entire videos of the festival. And in this case, I decided not to. One, because last year I did a two-parter. So it was like two 20-minute videos and it was like very poor viewing. So it's like people, I guess, don't care about looking at a festival unless they went to the festival or something. So I decided, you know, plus I was busy. It was two days. I didn't want to have to film everything. And so I just, I didn't, you know. Um, on the Friday night, it was Friday night and Saturday all day uh, for the festival. I worked both days. And on Friday, I was the stage manager for both stages because one of our stage managers uh, didn't get into town until late, so he missed it. Um, I would say the highlight of that day was definitely seeing TV on the radio.
Uh, this was the first time I'd seen them in probably 12 years or so, and they were exceptionally good. They don't have a new album or anything. I even talked to one of the guys after the show and was like, man, your new record, your newest record's four years old. Like, what the fuck? You know? And so they said, they said they're working on it. They're just really slow, but they were the highlight of my first night for sure. second day was the big day. They had fest the music all day long. I'm not really sure why they do these days because honestly, like they let people in at noon and the first artist goes on at like 12:30 or 1 and there's barely any crowd there until 5 or 6 o'clock. So it's like if you play earlier in the day, you play in front of almost nobody and it doesn't matter whether you're on the big stage or the small stage, you're still kind of playing in front of almost nobody and that's got to be kind of frustrating. I don't know what you can do to get people to come there early, but I mean, that's just the nature of things. They get there later in the day. But um, case in point, you know, David Nance, who I talk about a lot on this channel, performed, and he had an amazing, amazing set seen by about 25, 30 people, I guess. I don't know how many people. You could hear it for miles. I mean, it was so loud. But in terms of like people witnessing it, kind of slim, unfortunately. You know, Nance's set was a highlight. His is always set. That band he's got is like super good. Um, later on in the day, I really liked the Kills. They were also on my stage. Their crew was a little high maintenance during the day, uh, but not not super bad or anything. But I mean, I was just like, I don't care. These guys are so awesome. And then they did their show, and uh, Allison Mosshart was just incredible in person. She was such a solid performer. The Kills were, I mean, God, they were so fucking good really really dug the show a lot of the other artists were good i just didn't uh i was either working on my stage and i didn't have time to pay attention to them or um it was a case where i just i needed a breather i needed a break and since we were outside and it was so hot i would go to the production trailer so i could sit in the air conditioning and in that case i basically missed most of father john misty because i i needed to get some air you know um, I heard he was very good, but and he's and he is someone I really like. But I just I needed a breather, and I wanted to make sure that I was there for Weezer. Uh, Weezer headlined this year's festival. Good retro act. I love their '90s stuff maybe into the 2001, 2002. Haven't really cared for much they've done ever since then, but they put on a great show, again, doing the hits. Their crew kind of, you know, generally when you're backstage and you're working at these festivals, a lot of times you can stand on the side of the stage and watch the, the band as they're playing. Well, not for Weezer. They were like, nobody's on the side of the stage. You have to be pushed back like a super far away distance. They wanted everybody back a bit. And the main rationale behind that was because at one point Rivers was going to go from the big stage to the little stage and he was going to do a mini set over on the side stage. So he had to walk from one to the other and I guess they thought, you know, God forbid we would, we would see him or something or be near him or whatever. So anyways, we had to be pushed back. It was cool what he did. Again, um, I, I love the Weezer classic stuff. They tended to play a lot of classics 
and that's why I was I was happy with the set. when I'll be back no promises but uh, I, I will be back there's no there's, I'm not not making any stupid proclamations this is the end of the channel I'm done doing no 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 none of that I'm just uh, the consistency is going to be a little inconsistent uh, coming up shortly I can't do anything about that take care everyone bye bye